All right, time to build a dock. I'm fairly confident that this is like a foolproof plan. Dun, 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 dun. That's kind of freaky. Time for deep space explorer number four. Yep, I got one. I've never done this before. Spicy eel sushi roll catch and cook. I think this is the best thing I've ever cooked in the outdoors. I'm Zachary Fowler, and this is the seven day island survival challenge. For the next seven days, this island's all mine. To build, to create. God, I hope this works. To have adventure on. Yeehaw. <laughs> and to catch and cook as many unique things no as I can come up with. Smoke eel sushi in the outdoors. Feathers from a sleeping bag or something. All right, another beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> it's early, so I can get all kinds of stuff done today. Hopefully, uh, that hurricane's still sweeping through, so it'll probably rain again at some point. Oh, I sleep so well in this thing, and it's just so cozy. It's so cozy. All right, here we go. Isn't he just the cutest little thing? Oh. Ah, So it's kind of hard to show you, but when I'm looking to start a spark on just a piece of coal that's in front of the fire, you don't want one that's like hard coals. Uh, you're looking for like a feathery, there's a little bit of featheriness in there. They spark onto something like that where it's a just a square and flat and isn't feathery, doesn't like to take a spark. Beautiful, once again, muggy August day in Maine. Even my Our Daily Bread is like getting 
it doesn't quite sound nearly as papery. It's all kind of like soaked it up with all the moisture. Like my waterproof Bible, no problem. Certain things you don't know because you on camera you can't really can't really show you how muggy it is. You know, it's uh such an added difficulty during all this because every step you go into the trees you get wet and my waxing I did to the pants beforehand has helped some but more just because it has a uh, bug scent in it from and it keeps uh keeps the bugs off it's something I worked on with Copper Johns uh, you can check that out in the gear video link below more about that and uh, more about Copper Johns in the next episode but today's sponsor I'd like to introduce you to Omaze. Omaze empowers nonprofits to raise awareness about their work by offering dream come true experiences that anyone can win. I'm super excited to announce to you that I've partnered with Omaze to offer you their biggest prize yet, a sprinter van. Not just any sprinter van, this sprinter van has an $80,000 eco conversion. After watching my adventures, maybe you've been inspired and you want to get out there, but you'd like to do it in style. For a donation of just $10 that supports the Honnell Foundation, you're entered to win the Sprinter Van. Two seats, a little galley, a fridge to keep your stuff cold, a bed in the back so you can choose your own view out the bedroom window each night, and solar panels so you can still have power, enjoy some of the finer things while you're unplugging from the rest of the world. This campaign's donations go to support the Honnell Foundation where they envision a world where all people have an equal access and opportunity to live in balance with the environment through solar energy. Support this worthy campaign so you have a chance that your next adventure doesn't end up like this. Most annoying sound in the world. <laughs> Go to omaze.com slash Fowler and enter to win. Yeah, we'd appreciate it. Special congratulations to Robert of Charleston, West Virginia for winning Omaze's last Sprinter van. So don't forget to check out those links in the description below, our three most important links. Our sponsor for today's video, the gear video, so you can check out all the gear that we have here without us having to belabor it in all the videos. And number three, the playlist, so if you've just tuned in, you're going to want to go back and start at the beginning of the series and watch it from there. I'm going to read my uh, Our Daily Bread, have some quiet time, do a little journaling, and then we'll get on with the build. I think today I'm going to do a dock, and I want to try to build a slingshot that can shoot my weight and worm and lure out. Like a big slingshot that shoots my uh, lure out there further to catch a fish in the a little bit out deeper. I don't know why I just did that. Give you a th thumbs up. Thumbs up. Alright, let's see what the Our Daily Bread has for me today. Dear Diary, I wonder what it would be like to do a 30 day survival challenge in space. Of course in space you have to bring everything with you. We wouldn't be doing any fishing on the moon or picking any mushrooms on Mars. And I hear that on the International Space Station you have to drink your own urine. Of course they filter it, unlike Bear Grylls who just likes it straight up. soup for some breakfast all right time to build a dock I hope this works it's something I've really wanted to do and I haven't built another dock since alone and I loved my little dock there I'd sit out on it I was actually hoping to do that here day one there's a lot of rocks on alone it was like so freezing and it was all mucky bottom but like sandy bottom so I was able to pound the stakes in and I did an X pattern and I think here I'm gonna try I'm just gonna see if they pound in. If I can find a spot between the rocks, if I do diagonals, they don't have to pound in far. They can support each other and all the lashings can hold them from one to the next. Whereas if they're vertical, then I'll need to build almost a freestanding dock 
with diagonals and things like that to i'll have to triple my number of diagonals and lash together stuff and then right here we have some branches i would really like to get out far enough maybe snip one or two of these little branches so that i can cast and then at the end of the dock i'll be able to pull the kayak up step out onto the dock and not have to wrestle with it and have a little pole spot for my fishing pole with a slingshot like here and i can put my stuff in it instead of even having to be cast i can be like Pew! and shoot it out over the water so the first thing i gotta do is uh find some sticks cut some sticks to build this all out of there's a, a nice maple and another one. I kind of prefer the beaches and uh, when it comes to cutting the trees here I promise to be a conservationist about it. Kind of the same way I am up at my land but at home. So we're not just going out and chopping a bunch of trees in a big area. We're picking ones that um, might not do as well. So like for instance you got two here. We pick one that looks the best to leave it and this one to take away or something. So that one's all twisted, but it's got some nice straight sections to build my dock. If we take that one away, this one will have a greater chance to be able to get all the nutrients it needs and everything to actually push up through the canopy and past these other trees. So if we were to clear, like you're doing Sylvia pastures or cleaning up your woodland area, it's always good to actually cut away some of the trees. Pick the good one that you're trying to keep clean around underneath of its canopy so that it has the opportunity to go up and go through the upper canopy of the trees in another 70 years because we cleared around this maybe one of these pines falls away it has a chance to make it up through the canopy and now it can be sugared and somebody could have enjoy maple sugar from this tree that we kind of helped along by cutting away some of the stuff underneath of it I even found the perfect one for my slingshot. Giant lure chucking slingshot. Oops, soup is on. There we go, I better put that. Hopefully I didn't boil off all the water. Run out of room on my kitchen table. Oh, that smells good. Oh. Mmm, the fishy broth, the melted down fish heads and boiled down leeks and everything a growing boy needs. I'll cover that up, save that for a snack. A little bit, get some more building done before I have lunch. All right, back to work. All right, we need the ax, the saw, the string, a winding stick. What else? Some water. This would make a nice long walkway. Didn't get me out very far though. My paper towel of the woods right here. <laughs> Order now and we'll send you paper towel of the woods. Fresh from the woods.
You guys scared me. <laughs> I was so into my story and working on the, I was like, ah! There we go. Super solid. Dun 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 dun. Uh, I don't know how to dance. Uh, just sit down on the end of my dock and uh, enjoy the rain. <laughs> I like it. I feel like going for a swim. I'm so sweaty. It's just so ugh. It's only like 70 degrees, but it's just so muggy. Ooh, the wind must have changed. I can smell my little maggot raising farm thing. Ugh. Now I just have to, I'm gonna trim uh, one or two little limbs so I can cast out from my dock and set my pole up and then I'll be able to use my slingshot things. Zzz, out into the wild, so swim or finish my project. Swim, finish my project. I'm gonna go for a little swim. Maybe a little dance dock. deep enough to jump in I mean I feel like I almost got to do it because it's my dock but I worried about breaking a leg once I hit the I'll just walk in yeah I'm only waist deep and I'm six feet from the dock I'd really have to jump far and hard not to hit bottom why does it feel so cold all of a sudden oh. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's kind of freaky. Like I can see through these pretty clearly, but only at like three, four feet. Just to, until I get used to it, the clearer it is, the less claustrophobic I am. But I feel almost claustrophobic when I'm down there with this on and I'm just like, like the noise deprivation thing. But it's so beautiful. I just get over it and just keep going, keep trying. For a second there, I thought maybe he was gonna go for it. I couldn't float without, I had to blow some bubbles up my nose. <laughs> then he turned away. Now I know, I, I thought for sure, if there's ever, you know, bass hanging around undercover like that, that tree that the beaver knocked down, I haven't even tried there yet. I've just been everywhere else. Some nice looking bass. Oh, I feel like seven days. Almost isn't enough time. Like I'm just starting to get into the swing of things. Just starting to get things figured out where the fish are. 
I haven't even explored that side of the lake, down that way. I know down that way there's a, uh, a dam, but it's like closer to the road. I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Hope you guys have been enjoying it. I think I'm gonna get something dry on. Different shirt, it's not all sweaty and sticky. And uh, finish my slingshot dock idea. And all I have to do though is go cast over <laughs> next to that tree. <laughs> but that giant one that I caught was out there, out in the deeper water. Of course, at this point, they could just be anywhere. It's all about just having some fun. That one branch opened it up quite a bit. I hate to whoa, fall off the dock. I hate to open it up too much. Not very easily. Maybe just a little bit of this other branch. Oh yeah, that opens up the place a whole lot with just two little limbs. I don't see if I can cast over underneath that tree where we saw the fish. Got a little frog. Oh my goodness, this hook is way on the small side for this bait. That might just work, running it upside down. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, that was very strangely done. <sighs> I just give it a few casts. I actually don't even want to catch anything right now. I mean, I want to catch something because I want to fish, but I need to finish my project so I can catch it the way I wanted to catch it. Nice. Just right. Oh man, that alone just makes me feel epically spoiled. What a pain in the neck that has been the entire time I've been here. Having to, every time, stepping out and slipping on those rocks and stuff. Now I am super spoiled. nick at the top so the bands don't come off and a big rock chucker band <laughs> oh it turns hmm I mean, ultimately, I'm not going to throw a frog out there. I'll put, um, not this frog, but a worm. But this seems like an easy enough one to shoot out there as a test. Something that won't hook me should I screw this up. So, flip the bail. Right there is a pole holder. Cool. Maybe pull out a little extra line. Pinch it in the... Like, 
That was further than I cast earlier with that frog, I think. Well, let's find out. I think I got a bite. Oh, what the heck? I broke off. Darn, that's not cool. Man, this is a 15 pound test. Man, it was moving too. It was like first cast. Something had it. It might have just been something small, so it had the frog. Now it spit it and it's out there. Darn. I hate to do something like that to a fish. That is just. I've got to get 20 pound test, 25 pound, and then that was 15 pound test to a 15 pound liter. All right, try again. Some fresh tackle. I'm gonna go with a worm this time. I was really hoping to cast that same frog and see if I cast, if that shoots it. I didn't even yarn back on that all the way. That works really good. I'll have to make one of those for my boat. <laughs> or, or, oh, striper fishing. Huh? How cool would that be? Go out striper fishing and uh, like park a uh, slingshot at the side of the dock. I'll have to hold the hook and the sinker together and try to zing send it flying out there. Hook like that, it's got kind of a sideways twist helps for hooking them. Oh yeah? Really? I don't know what his problem is. What? I've been here for more than half a week now. You've never had a problem before. Yeah? Put that all the way up here on the braid. All right, first a plane cast to measure distance. 25 feet. Right, here we go. Worm and sinker are in there. I gotta get it past the end of the pole so I don't whack my pole or the trees. Uh, okay. Didn't work. Worm went out there. Uh, the hook sinker's here, but the hook somehow flipped up and around the line. I don't understand why no line went out at all. Maybe the sinker fell out of the pouch as I was shooting it. New victim for the space launch. You're gonna go where no worm has gone before, or at least in a method that no worm has ever experienced before as far as I know. <laughs> Report of field field, field field, field field. Four, three, two, one. Nope. The hook. Hook just caught into the pouch and the worm went flying. Something's going on. It's like I need some sort of a delivery system. If I just put the sinker in and the hook and the worm are sitting on top of the stick. So they just got yanked into following. I feel like the worm is just gonna get shredded. Explorer number three, we'll call it. Come here, little fella. Right here, on the, there, on the piece of rubber. And then I'll just shoot the sinker. Godspeed and good luck to you. What is going on? <sighs> Move the sinker right down, right next to the worm, and try that. <clears throat> Time for deep space explorer number four. Open the pod bay doors, please. Come on down, let me tell you what you won. I'm sorry, Dave. A all expenses paid trip. What are you talking about, Hal? To somewhere out in the middle of the lake. <clears throat> One way or another, they've all gone out there. This Houston contact with a test one. 
Two. Captain's log. 41162.2. The passengers are all secure in their bunks. Transfer complete. I'm prepared for liftoff. We are hopeful that we'll reach new heights. I've never before seen uh, foolishness. Ah, what happened this time? How did the frog do so well? All right, move the position of the pole. Explorer number five. Captain's log. All earlier experiments have failed. Explorers sent out have not returned to base. Successful. We do not know the outcome of their missions. We pray Godspeed to them. They found a better way, a better place, a special place. Probably a bass's belly, or perch, or bluegill. Maybe not so much a better place. Attempt number five. Drawing back. Everything is out of the way. Lord bless my aim, bless my shot. Oh! It worked. Maybe it was the better position. That's further than I can cast, too. I did see something fall off in the water halfway between here and there, though. I don't know if the worm actually made it. I have to check. Ah, snagged on the bottom. One cast and it works. And I'm stuck on, but that's what happened the other day and then I caught that like three pounder in the eel. Would've been quicker if I just paddled out there and dropped my line and then paddled back and stuck the pole here at the dock. But it wouldn't have been as much fun, would it? <laughs> <sighs> Oh, it's a big old tree right there. Right where I cast. I bet you anything that's right where I'm stuck to. Yep, right to the tree. Got it. Oh, and the worm did make the launch. All right, so I got a method. It's the problem was the pole was too upright in the kayak. And as soon as I put it out like this, it was able to spool out stuff. So I was at too fast. Put the pole through here so it spools straight. After hearing back from one of our explorers that the waters are good and this is possible. I'm gonna try to put it with the hook upright. Worm down. Weight in the center. Pinch. Wait, not the worm. Right. Uh, oh yeah, that was it. I've got it figured out. <laughs> this time, I guess we'll try to go to the right because the pole's to the left. Nope, at that time. Hook got stuck in the pouch. It even feels a little warm to the touch. Like just from all the friction or something. Oh, that's wild. You're up. Explorer number six. Round control to Major Tom. Tell my wife I love her very much. Ah. Again, it's stuck into the pouch. All right, plan. I don't even know anymore. My water bottle I had with me when I left. And if I attach that to the sinker, and then the hook falls falls out of that. I'll just have to attach this to this so that I don't end up with just leaving a piece of trash out there in the lake. So if I put the hook, maybe put the hook through it. Explorer number eight. Inside of there, inside of this. 
I'm fairly confident that this is like a foolproof plan. Full send. Okay, I went kind of lightly. It worked perfectly. It also works as kind of a wind drag. Ah, there we go. I have a good feeling about you, Mr. Worm, this time. I saw your potential the first time we ever met. I said to myself, there's a worm that's gonna go far in life. <laughs> ah. Now what? Oh my goodness. I lost half the worm. I guess I was wrong about you, Mr. Worm. You're not half the worm I thought you were. I have no idea what just happened. There's zero worm on the hook, but it's not tangled. The last of our intrepid adventurers. We'll see. We'll see a, a new dawn. Or the bottom of the lake. Oh, a perfect shot. Not as far as I would have liked, but it's short, shy of the tree. And that leaves me with some line left. And there's still a good 10 yards on there for something to hit it and take it. I'll get a little drag. Oh shoot, I was just changing and I'm in my underwear. I see the, I heard the bell. I might have a fish. Yep, I got one. Don't lose it. Doesn't feel like a big one. Oh, oh, what do we got? Ooh, he's a jumper. A little bassin. Hey, that's a smallie, I think. All right. Well, it worked. It's official. It's official. Good enough. That'll do. Thanks, little buddy. All right, time to make some sushi. Or my bushcraft facsimile. I'm gonna get rid of this and just use plain water. I'm gonna measure out some water to go with my rice. This should actually work pretty good. The pressure cooker, well, pressure cookers are like the best way to make sticky rice. And half of this full. Threw some of the Aces first cast seasoning in there. This is gonna be interesting. I've never done this before. I think it should be fairly doable. If I nail the rice and it's sticky, I'll have it. I'm gonna save the fish for breakfast and do just the eel sushis. I'm tired, I don't even feel like filleting another fish or cooking it. Real eel sushi rolls, as far as I know, are all fun fact. Just, it's a smoked eel. You don't eat raw eel when you buy the sushis and they have the eel ones. Seaweed, cucumber, ginger, avocado. Oh, I'm just so tickled with my whole little, how everything's turning out, you know? Uh, this, being able to, you know, have the, the, the bucket there to wash. It folds up, can go in the boat. Put my plate on top of it. This is just too cool. All right, avocado. Cucumber.
Ginger. Thin little slivers. Let's see if I can get them longer. Let's see if the rice is good. Oh, not ready yet. Oh, <laughs> this looks so good. Oh, uh, maybe not the bug. I could, li I could live without the little guy that just flew into there. Hey, get out of there. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the adventure. Thank you for your creation. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited. This is like going to be the coolest thing I've ever made when I was out. Like, I, now I want to go home. It was so easy. Like, I don't even have a sushi roll-up thing. I just use my uh, Hidden Woodsman uh, signal blanket that I use for sitting on wet ground. And it's not supposed to be for that. It's like you could use it for signaling or you use it for sitting on a wet grass. I mean, I use it to wrap dead fish in. Not this time around, but like I usually use it for that. Somebody actually told me once that the ginger is for... Um, is to cleanse your palate between sushis. I don't know if that's true, uh, but I added my chipotle mayo. I made a spicy, spicy mayo, basically, and it reminds me of the spicy mayo I've had at other places, actually, uh, quite a bit. Maybe that's just because it looks so much like it. Uh, and then there's the kimchi powder and sesame seeds, avocado, cucumber, and uh, the smoked and then toasted eel. After smoking for almost four days, I did... Uh, Actually, it has been like four days. Uh, I did just like toast it over the fire. I don't want to get sick and stuff. So, bottoms up. That's like almost way too much. I should have sliced these thinner. Mmm. Mmm. It's a mouthful, that's for sure. Mmm. Wow. Okay. As good as that turned out, I can definitely see that my proportions are a little off. Like, I could have, uh, 
If I was going to make it that bigger, I should have made a little bit less rice. But man, is that good. Oh. Mmm. The eel's pretty good. That worked out really good. It tastes it tastes kind of fishy, like, but not in a bad way. Like just just strong enough that it's kind of right, you know. That like just strong enough that it's like you actually have a fish thing in there and not just some fake, you know, fish substance. Or and actually has a little bit more flavor than because of all the smoking too, than like salmon or or one of those ones that you know really is than something that's really raw. Woo! Full send. Spicy eel sushi roll catch and cook. Here we go. That's a lot to fit in your mouth. I think I made them a little big. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I don't know if it's just being out here for five days or what, but like flavors are... That's what happened to me in, in Patagonia. It's like flavors came. The first thing they gave me was almonds and raisins. They were so good. I'd never ate anything that tasty in my entire life. The flavor is like, it's, it's strong, but it's just offset by all the other things just so perfectly. Unreal. I think it's the best thing I've ever cooked in the outdoors. Mmm. I did peel the spinal cord out. At first I tried to do it with a knife. And so I think I missed one because that last bit had a little crispy piece in it. Like maybe it was a piece of the spinal cord chopped off. But I only cut that one little piece that way with the knife. And then the other ones I realized if I just used my finger, it opened it up. And the spinal cord pulled right out. And the little pin bones that are still in all the meat from the eel. Uh, because of the smoking, you can't taste them. Catch and cook sushi. So awesome. I'm gonna save the rest of those for four of them for the morning. It was magical. Alright, in for the night. Not too shabby, not too shabby, but not it's muggy as all get out again. I don't even think it's 70 degrees, but the mugginess. Ugh. Anyway, uh, but not complaining, just explaining, because if I didn't say something, you wouldn't know what it was really like and you'd be left out so slingshot thing turned out pretty good not as nice as i wanted i'll have to revisit that at some point uh maybe a pouch that the hook couldn't stick to would do it because by sending the plastic piece along with it it ruined the casting distance and i didn't have enough line i think that was a rod that when springtime came i ripped like 10 yards or 15 yards off of it and cut it and threw it away because it had gotten too exposed to the sun or whatever, you know. So it broke off a fish earlier in the year, and I was like, ugh, I either got to change this out, and then I exposed, and I was like, there's plenty of good line still here, but I didn't have enough to get a really hit its full potential. It uh, spooled all the way out and could have gone further when I did actually get it working good. So I'll maybe I'll have to make a special pouch just for shooting line way out there maybe a bigger one and a bigger thing and try it for striper fishing really zing it out and uh i think that pretty much does it dinner was awesome day was great i hope you've enjoyed this video and uh see you guys in the next one thanks for watching fowler out